Saturday morning. And that means it's time to catch up on the local and statewide high school sports scene. Welcome to High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Now, here are your hosts, Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Ah, yes, a glorious Saturday in the March to March. Well, it's it's here. It's March. The March, I guess, is over. But the March to State Championships and to March Madness has only begun. Matt Hatfield here with you on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Taking you up to 11.45 a.m. today when we have college basketball. Thomas Simmons, other side of the glass. Thomas, what is the college hoops game? I done forgot already, which is a bad job by me. But Give me five seconds. I'll see. You, you I forgot remember. as well. All right. And sitting across from me is the coach from Nans Whatever High School in Suffolk. You, sir, are? I be Ed Young. You be Ed Young. You're not is Ed Young, no, or are Ed Young, that's, that's the high or school. was Ed Young. That's the high school slang. I be Ed Young. Or will be Ed Young. Have been for a long time. All right. You feeling all right? Oh, I feel great. That's not what you said five minutes ago as you were uh, trying to patch up your sore knee yet again. Yeah, my, my knee, I, I, I might have to go under under the, under the knife. I think oh, no. Knee, Serious surgery? Yeah, I think the knee is going to need some uh, Uh-oh. TLC with, under the knife. You've been under the knife before, but for different reasons. Mm, no, I haven't had an operation in... No, 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 no. You've been under the knife before. Well, there was that time back in uh, L.A. when somebody tried to pull a knife on me, but I took care LA? of that L.A.? You were out in L.A.? Yeah, I took I took care of that situation. Okay. What, what's our college basketball game, by the way? So we've got a Big Ten matchup. It's number six Michigan State traveling to Bloomington, Indiana to Ooh. take on the Hoosiers. Upset alert. Who are Upset alert. over 500 on the season. Yeah, and, and uh, the Hoosiers did you well the other night. It's Tyus Battle do you well, but that's their story. I guess the only one I won. That, well, I don't know if it's the only one you won. The only one you won against Kyle had to head. But anyhow. Uh, phone lines are open for you to talk to us at 757-687-9494. This morning, 757-687-9494. Right here on ESPN Radio 94.1. We have Lady Monarchs basketball after that as ODU's women's basketball team will be in action today. Over at the TED against Marshall. Airtime beginning at 3.30 here on ESPN Radio 94.1. Then NBA action with Golden State at Philadelphia, Warriors and Sixers. But as we like to do here each and every Saturday morning on High School Sports Talk. In fact, this will be the last Saturday until the uh, state championship games. We'll have state championship games coming up across the area and the state. For those that do not know for high school basketball, uh, Wednesday, beginning at 12.30 in the afternoon. Don't get what? me started. Yeah. You have class five, girls and boys. Then at night is class six, girls and boys. Thursday is class four and class three. And we have teams alive in both of those divisions. And then there's a break Friday due to an ESPN2 game involving VCU and St. Joseph's that night uh, in Richmond at the Siegel Center. So no games on Friday. Then it'll all finish up a week from today. Next Saturday, March the 9th with Class 2 and Class 1. We have a couple of teams alive for that. So uh, we've got some special guests throughout the morning. We'll be hearing from um, at 10.45 a.m. Deep Creek girls basketball coach Kip Sutton. They're two wins away from a state title. Got a rematch set up with Lake Taylor coming up on Tuesday. Uh, part of a double header over at Churchland High at Portsmouth. We'll also be hearing from Brandon Plummer, head boys basketball coach of the Maury Commodores. He is the Region 5A coach of the year. His team, the Region 5A champs. They won that at Scope to the night of a green run, and they'll be taking on Verona, the defending state champs, on Monday night over at Norview High School. So Brandon Plummer will join us at 11.05 this morning. We'll also have playbacks with a couple of uh, Surrey Cougars coaches, the boys coach James Pope, the girls coach, Chris Brown, and also here maybe from the hero of the boys' game last night. But let's fire up that scoreboard, shall we? As we tell you about what happened in state quarterfinal games across the state of Virginia last night. There was 48 of them, 24 on the boys' side, 24 on the girls' side, and plenty of 757 flavor moving on to the semifinal round with games on Monday and Tuesday next week. There was also some private school action across the state as the VISAA state championships are going on today at Virginia State University up in Richmond. So, Coach Young, where do you want to begin? I'll let you pick it out. Private schools Oh, wow. That's where you're starting? 
I, Take his temperature, Thomas. I'm shocked. He never starts there. Well, they're deeper into their um, state state. That's true. Championship so, day, games are today. Yeah, let, let's go into that. All right. Let's take a look at it, shall we? And I'll actually begin on the girls' side if you don't have an issue with that. You always no, say ladies. ladies first, right? Ladies first. Division I, VISA, state semis. Uh, Paul, the six girls, beat Bishop O'Connell 54-43. to It was St. Anne's Belfield over Bishop Ireton 59-51. Division II, Miller School eliminating the lone 757 representation. That's Nansman Suffolk Academy. It was Miller out of Albemarle 48, Nansman Suffolk 43. Highland School defeating Stewart 51-47. And in Division Three, Brunswick Academy Edges out Middleburg Academy 50 to 49, the closest game of the day yesterday. It had to be because it was a one point difference. And Richmond Christian doubling up Carlisle 47 24. So your state finals there on the girls' side Brunswick Academy, Rich- Richmond Christian in Division Three. Division Two is Highland and Miller. And Division One girls, Paul the Six and Stab. That's St. Anne's Belfield. On the boys' side for private school action, Division One Episcopal. Beating Paul the six, 63 to 59. Now that surprises you, but even bigger surprise, Joey Wooten's Bishop O'Connell team going down and going down big as St. Stephen's and St. Agnes throttled them 76 to 46. You never see O'Connell lose by 30. Well, they did yesterday. No, no that, that St. Stephen's, St. Agnes school pretty good, uh, but losing by 30, no, you don't see it. And as you heard the other day on the uh, 757 at 6 here on ESPN Radio 94.1, we had Jonathan Wofford in Thursday night. He told you Charles Thompson, a real force for them. He's a football basketball stud going to Towson on the hoop side, and he was a factor in the paint for St. Stephen's. Division two, Blue Ridge over Middleburg Academy, 63-47. to So Blue Ridge will take on Miller School in the D2 Boys State Championship today at Virginia State. That's because Miller won 52-47 to over VES, Virginia Episcopal. Division three Life Christian. Remember, they beat Maury earlier this season. Well, they had no trouble at all with Christ Chapel, 89-56, to and Life Christian will play Eastern Mennonite in the state final. A bit of a surprise as Eastern Mennonite won 52-47 to over Walsingham yesterday in that one. So uh, your games today, uh, Division one Episcopal St. Stephen's at 4 o'clock. Blue Ridge Miller's at 2 o'clock, and coming up at noon is Life Christian Eastern Mennonite at noon. You got any winners in those games, or are you going to stay off them right now? No, I'm going St. Agnes. St. Agnes in the first one. St. Stephen, St. Agnes. All right, I'll go Episcopal just to be different. Give me Blue Ridge over Miller. Uh, I li- I'll live with that, I agree. And I, I'm going to go Life Christian. But I think Life Christian wins easy. I don't think Eastern Mennonite's doing it two days in a row. So we agree on two to three. <clears throat> now we move to the public school ranks. Ed, and do you want to take them from six to one, one to six, or just hop around all over the place? And no, no, no. Let, play let's hopscotch. Go. What do you want to do? No hopscotch on this one. Let's go. Let's. Most of our teams are in the five, six, fours. Let's start at one. Start at one. I heard your favorite game as a kid was hopscotch. Jacks. It was Jacks. Yeah. All right. Guess I was told bad information. Class one, you want to go boys or girls first? Girls, we got it all. Girls first. Girls first. He says ladies first. Game I watched yesterday over at Sussex Central. I saw my man Keith, who will be hearing from in a little bit, of Smithfield, now of Surrey County. He has switched from a Smithfield guy to a Surrey guy. He'll tell you about that here in a bit. Surrey girls, 51, Alta Vista, 13. Literally, the Alta Vista girls did not score in the second or third quarters oh my yesterday God. as that was just blowout city for Chris Brown's Lady Cougars of Surrey High all over Alta Vista in that one. They were just simply dominant from start to finish, soup to nuts. Brisha Bird, 16 points, 10 boards. Alexis Nelson had a double-double as well, and Deandra Kelly chipping in 12 points. So Surrey girls forcing 34 turnovers, Ed. They move on to take nice. on in the semifinal round Riverheads, a 73-48 winner over West Point. So it'll be Surrey Riverheads at Sussex Central coming up next week in one part of the state semis. On the other side of the bracket, up in Christiansburg, it was Perry McClure, the two-time defending state champs, a winner over Patrick Henry of Glade Spring by a count of 62-44. to And Honaker, 38. Galax, 30. So Perry McClure, Honaker, other side of the bracket, but I think we're going to get a rematch, Ed, in the state final of Surrey and Perry McClure next Saturday morning at 11 a.m. in the state finals. I agree. I absolutely agree. That's who's going to be. You can watch it with us on the NFHS Network. Sign up today. Uh, Shimless plug. Moving over to the boys' side for Class 1. Surrey boys had a little more trouble 
than the Surrey girls. In fact, we, Thomas, we had a buzzer beater last night. Monty Pope hit the buzzer beater. I can say that word now, right? It's been a week. I mean, the yeah, team that did it to you I'm over it. has been eliminated, so you shouldn't be holding any. Yeah, I'm over okay. it. I'm All right. Over. Just making sure. Surrey boys on a buzzer beater. That's a shot that goes through the net the horn as the horn sounds. Over Riverheads, 41-39. They were up 11. Riverheads came storming back behind. James Madison baseball commit Grant Painter and his younger brother Adam Painter. But Surrey wins it on Monty Pope's circus shot. We'll hear later on in the show from him and the coach James Pope. They're now 27-2 overall, and they'll have a rematch with Rappahannock, who they played in the Region 1A Championship. Rappahannock won at Hopewell High School yesterday over Carver Academy, 68-60. to Other side of the bracket, it was East Side hitting a shot at the buzzer to force overtime. They were down a dozen, and they beat Auburn, not the Auburn Tigers, but Auburn High School, the Eagles of Auburn High. Eastside prevails in OT, 63-60. They were the state runner-up last year that fell to Lancaster. Well, they won't play Lancaster this year in the state tournament. They'll be playing J.I. Burton next as J.I. Burton eliminated George Wythe, 46-36 at UVAY. So there you have it, Surrey, Rappahannock, Eastside, J.I. Burton. What do you think? I had Surrey playing J.I. in the championship. And you're still sticking with that? I'm going to still stick with that. All right, no love for the two seeds. You love the one seeds. Move on up to class two. Move on up. Let's go to two. Dun, dun, dun. Isn't that a song? Move on up. That's a theme song for the Jeffersons. Well, that, that's that's a difference. You're right. To the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Well, we don't. We're not going to any deluxe apartments. There are no skies. Girls in class two. It was Greensville fifty-one to thirty-nine over Page County. Strasburg falling to Maggie Walker. The Governor's School of Maggie Walker thirty-nine. Strasburg thirty-eight. Floyd County falling to Ridgeview. Ridgeview a winner, 53-46 to in the girls in Class 2. And Central Wise, the defending champs under legendary coach Robin Dotson, all over Martinsville, 68-39. to Ed, I like Central Wise to win that bracket. They're going to take on Ridgeview in the semis. Greensville plays Maggie Walker. But to me, your state final might be the semifinal game with Central Wise and Ridgeview. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going Wise to win it all over Greensville. All right. Class two on the boys' side. It was Goochland over George Mason, 60-47. to Ed Young's pick, East Rockingham. He's been with them from the start of the season. Well, they were dominant yesterday, 75-44 to over Greensville. What about that undefeated team from Radford High School with a couple of Radford University commits in Quentin Morton-Robertson and Miles Jones? Well, they beat Graham High School, 66-51. to Rick Corman, he's Bobcats now, 28-0. On the season, and they'll next play the defending state champs. No, Matt McClung has graduated. He's now doing it up big as a freshman at Georgetown, but they have Zach Irvin, the Wofford commit. They have Bradley Dean, and Gate City is moving on as they beat Martinsville 47 to 41 in a defensive battle. Goochland, East Rockingham, and a big time showdown, Radford Gate City in the state semis. Ooh, I'm going to go East Rockingham over. Said Radford to win last time. You're not going to switch off uh, East Rock, I wouldn't think. No, I'm going to stay with East Rock to win it all against Gate City. Oh, you're switching now. You I'm think Gate switch. City? I think Gate City beats Radford. You're going to hand, hand them the first. They did that last year. First loss came in a state quarter. I think row? it's going to happen again. I don't think so. I think Radford's on a mission, on a mission from God. They're going to get it done this year. Class three on the girls' side. It was Hopewell for Princeville District. 45-35. Remember, Hopewell lost in last year's state championship to Lord Botetot. Speaking of Lord Botetot, they beat Western Albemarle 40-35. Lord Botetot will play Spotswood. Spotswood eliminated Magna Vista 54-43. William Monroe, led by Samantha Brunell, the number one player in the land, they won 56-31 over Parkview South Hill. So you get William Monroe versus Hopewell. You get Lord Botetot against Magna Vista. Ed, I will ask you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought Spots would beat Magna Vista. I'm sorry. Spots will play Lord Botetot. All right. Give me Monroe. Over Hopewell? Over Hopewell. They have the girl Sam Burnell going to Notre Dame. All right. In, in overtime. All right. I go Hopewell, but that's fine. And I'm going hmm. Botetot. And who wins the whole thing? Botetot? I'm going spots, whatever Lord Botetot, by the way. No, I'm going with uh, uh, Monroe. Really? 
You think Brunel's the difference going to Notre Dame? I think, I think she'll be the difference. All right. Class three on the boys' side. Phoebus, a winner over Culpepper yesterday, 84 to 48, as it was all Kyrie Temple. And I'm sorry, 84 to 45. Phoebus, a winner, 84 to 45 over Culpepper. It was all Kyrie Temple, 20 points, 12 rebounds, eight other Phantoms scored for Coach James Daniel. They now have won 17 consecutive games since their last loss. And Phoebus will play. Coming up on Tuesday at Heritage High in Newport News, the John Marshall Justices, a winner over the IC Norcom Greyhounds, 73-54. We've been waiting for this one since the start of the season at Phoebus. John Marshall, they met in the state quarters last year. They're going to meet in the state semis. A lot of people believe the winner of this game wins the whole thing. I agree, and the winner's going to play Northside. See, that's why I think the winner of that game is going to have so much taken out of them. With only one day off before the state final on Thursday, I think Phoebus and John Marshall are better. But I think that alone, the emotional, the buildup, and it could sap a lot of energy that Northside might win this whole thing because of that. That's my, my thinking here. Good, good way to look at it. Good Northside, way. a winner over Heritage of Lynchburg, 81-48. to They're led by, by the way, Northside, James Madison, signee Julian Wooden. He'll be a teammate of Lansdowne's Michael Christmas next year up in Harrisonburg. And Cave Spring winning on a buzzer beater over Spotswood, 56-54. to So Cave Spring Rallying and stunning spots. What Jacob Groose was a coach long time at Dan River, made state playoffs. He also was an assistant for a year or two there at Averett University. He's got Cave Spring in a great spot, but I think Northside's going to be too much for him. I agree. That Marshall Phoebus is going to be sweet. That game's at uh, Heritage, right? That's what we've been told. They played at Bethel last night, but we've been told that game will be at Heritage. Uh, by the way, Northside won the previous meeting with Cave Spring in the Region 3D Championship by a total of 84 to 60. Class four, girls. Oh, we got a couple of 757 teams ready to lock horns again. Lake Taylor, Sandra Sawyer's Lady Titans all over Eastern View yesterday, 76 to 39. And it was Deep Creek, a winner over Monacan, 67 to 54. We'll hear from Kip Sutton later on in the show. Lake Taylor, Deep Creek, the rematch. We shall see if Janaya Quinterly is there for Lake Taylor. I know last week at the Scope, saw her on crutches. She is the star player for them. Remember, they got to the state championship last year and lost to Heartbreaker to Millbrook. Um, should be an interesting rematch. Would still probably give the, the nod to Lake Taylor, but I won't be stunned if Deep Creek gives them a go and has a chance to win, Ed. Wouldn't be stunned. Well, they know him. They know him very well. Uh, Quinnery doesn't play. That helps Deep, Deep Creek a little bit. But until I see Lake Taylor falter, I just, it's hard to go against them, but that familiarity with Deep Creek over them, I think, helps a lot. They still have other good girls with Shaniqua Gilliam, Jasmine Poole, Jasmine Doster. They have other pieces that can step up. Uh, and then on the other side of the bracket, Pulaski County pulling a, a mild upset, shall we say, over Loudoun Valley, 52-49. to Pulaski County will play Carroll County, which knocked out the reigning state champion Millbrook, 45-39. to But again, I think the winner of Lake Taylor Deep Creek wins the whole thing, don't you? Yeah, I agree. I, that's a state title game. I'm not quite sure I can say the same on the boys locally, although what a job Kenny Brown's Titans are doing. One time they were literally staring at 7-15, and 15, Ed. They're now 12-15. and 15. They beat Cortland 64-43. to 43. Yesterday, Zyrell Mitchell and crew continue to hum, and they'll be taking on at Churchland and part of that doubleheader on Tuesday, the Louisa Lions. Louisa victorious over... Churchland 80 to 58. Chris Shelton with seven three point bombs for Louisa. Louisa can shoot it from distance. They've scored 80 plus now, I believe, four times in the last nine games. So they can put up points. That could be a track meet with them and Lake Taylor coming up on Tuesday. You know, that, to me, that's a state title game. And that. Really? That, yeah. Can you say that with GW Danville down on the other side of the bracket with their history and pedigree? I'm not sure you can say that. I, I, I'm telling you. I, I'm going to challenge you on that. I think it's late Taylor and Carver in the championship. And I'm Carver? Thinking, I mean, uh, GW Carver's Danville. Carver's in 1A. GW, GW Danville. Danville. Okay. I'm thinking back in the day when it was GW Carver, that, no. that school uh, combined with somebody else. They were a power way back in the day. You know, I, I'm excited, late Taylor. 
I'm jumping on that bandwagon. I think they can win it all. You got two. We put up a poll question this week on a seven five seven at six. Which school has the ch- best chance to get the daily double? Surrey girls and boys, Lake Tidder girls and boys. Wouldn't it be something if they both pulled it off? You know what? That's not far fetched. It's not far fetched. In is. fact, I think they're all probably considered the favorite to get to the state championship. Even though Lake Taylor's record is, when you look at it, it's like what? Right. But you look at them now in their last what six seven games compared to the first 10, 12, 13 games. Different team. Lake Taylor can win that game on Tuesday night. Uh, Louisa, though, is the, I know they Good. lost to Grafton. Everybody's saying, well, they, if they lost to Grafton, like, folks, get, don't get caught up in that whole thing. If, if the Shelton kid is hitting shots, it's going to be a tough game. But if they keep him from dialing it up from distance, uh, Titans can win it for sure. GW Danville will play Jefferson Forest in a rematch of the Region 4D Championship. Well, how did it happen? GW Danville came from behind to force overtime and beat Riverside 65-62 to while Jefferson Forrest knocked out Loudoun Valley. Remember, Loudoun Valley won a state title two years ago. Only one senior on this year's team. Nonetheless, Jefferson Forrest, a winner, 58-49 to over Loudoun Valley. Who you like in that game, JF and GW Danville? GW Danville. I like him in the rematch. Remember, Jefferson Forrest had to storm back from 13 down to win an overtime 61-54 about a week ago. Let's do this. Let's take a timeout and come on back with Class 5 and Class 6 scores and light up the phones at 757-687-9494. I know you're waiting patiently there, Keith. We'll get to you here in just a bit. More to come here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com as we talk some state tournament basketball action with you only on ESPN Radio 94.1. Now back to High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1 presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Here's Matt Hatfield. And Coach Ed Young. Well, we started with 96 teams left in Virginia High School League State Basketball Tournament action uh, yesterday. 48 on the boys, 48 on the girls. And that field has been cut in half to 48 total. 24 girls and 24 boys. Let's fire up the scoreboard as we told you. Class 1 through 4. We'll give you Class 5 and Class 6 results, Ed. And the local count right now is looking like what? How many teams we got left from the 757? We have with the young ladies uh, 4 and the boys 6. So there you have it, and we'll have two games for sure where we'll have at least one team from here, at least, in the state championship. Let's go to Class 5 on the girls' side now. Princess Anne, Lady Cavaliers, no trouble. It was trouble for Elsie Bird's bus in arriving on time to Salem High School, but the Lady Cavs, Darnell Dozier, they're now two wins away from a 10th state championship, and they're six in a row. They beat Elsie Bird 65-43, to despite, uh, you brought it to me during break, coach's decision, Isaiah James, uh, sitting out the second half there. They have so much firepower with her. Jaysha Clinton, the Region 5A player of the year. Brianna Jackson going to Miami that you could probably have the subs in and they'd be all right in the second half with that group and their depth and talent. PA will play a familiar foe in the Highland Springs. They've never beaten Princess Anne in the state tournament. They'll try to do so. Coming up on Monday, the Lady Springers of Highland Springs eliminate Hampton 55-49 to in a game that had some... Interesting um, foul calls, we shall say, up in the 804 area code. Was told that literally, Ed, in this one, in the first quarter, the foul count was 7 to nothing in favor of Highland Springs before you even blinked. And it's a tough one for Shonda Bailey's Crabbers losing by 6 up in the 804 to Highland Springs yesterday. Well, not being there, I can't say anything. But 7-0, I'm sorry, not, not a state game. It shouldn't be 7-0. I understand the boys game that Glen Ellen High School had a similar effect for parts of its contest as well. Some home cooking, shall we say. Other side of the bracket, Thomas Edison led by Carol Miller. We know how good she is for Edison. We saw her as a sophomore dazzle the crowd in a double overtime loss uh, to Highland Springs at Hampton University. Well, she's going to University of Virginia, and her team is now two wins away from the state title. They beat Patrick Henry of Roanoke 75-43. to Edison will play Freedom of South Riding in the next round. Freedom eliminating William Fleming 46-39. to And Freedom, probably the quietest 27-1 girls or boys team in the whole state. You don't hear a peep out of them. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I, In fact, I had Fleming in that game, so... Um, I'm looking at Edison taking on Princess Anne in the championship. Which would be a rematch of last year's state final. Diane Lewis's Eagles coming up short against Princess Anne, and it's going to be a tall task if they are to see them again. On the boys' side in Class 5, we'll be hearing from Brandon Plummer of the Maury Commodores this morning at 11.05. His team winning at 50-42 to over the LC Bird Skyhawks. And I thought Bird might win this game, but Clarence Rupert 
Starring yet again, 22 points for the big man, six foot seven junior center Matthew Menzia chipping in 14. And the Commodores are moving on to play Verona. We thought we might see this matchup last year in the state playoffs, both as a one seed while Maury got upset by the eighth seed Salem last year. Verona in a game that had a big lead. Green Run came storming back. They got a big lead again. Again, Green Run came storming back. Tied going into the fourth quarter. But Verina outscoring Green Run by 13 in the final frame to win it 75-62. to The fine career of Ashley James on the high school front is over. 22 points. He finishes up as the second all-time scorer in the school's history, just ahead of Tyler Blunt and just behind B.J. Jenkins. Yeah, it's a shame to see that happen. Uh, we're hoping for Green Run. To, I definitely want to see Green Run go on with a friend with Kenny Harris, coach. And, of course, they beat us. But playing that Verona team that's, what, what uh, 40 40 of the last 41. It's a lot of their last. I'll tell you in a second here the exact total. But, um, it, yeah, you're right. A team that was going to be hard to beat. They hung with them. In the end, though, too much from Verona. As really the board play of Kennard Richardson inside was the difference, it sounds like. And yet again, I mentioned the fouls. Both James and Jake Cooper were in foul trouble from what I understand last night. A lot of early fouls early in the quarters of that game. And it kept uh, Green Run from making that run to take the lead. Never got the lead in it. And you're right about Verona, Ed. They have now won 46 of their last 47 games in the state tournament for the third year in a row. They are playoff tested. And I'm obviously being defended champs will be the favorite. But I don't think it's going to phase Maury at all. Um, I still kind of go Verona, I think, and an edge over that. But obviously I'm pulling for Maury. And uh, Brandon Plummer to win that all for for 757. I think Maury has a chance now, and I think the edge they have, I'm not going to say the edge in the game, but the thing that helps them more than it did, did Green Run is they're having that game here in the 757. It'll be Monday night at Norview, so they have to travel down here, and you don't expect the home cooking. Well, if you get home cooking, it's good for you if you're a <laughs> 757 team, so uh, that will help. Other side of the bracket, what happened in five in the CD teams? Well, and by the way, People will complain about this. We should have had those four teams in the Final Four, I think. Because no disrespect to these next four teams, they're not the same caliber of Verona, Burr, Maury, and Green Run. Nonetheless, somebody would be playing either Maury or Verona in the state finals. Potomac Falls, they're 27-1 now as they beat Potomac 52-45. to And Freedom South riding a winner over Halifax County 59-48. to So I ask you, Ed, Freedom handed Potomac Falls its only loss of the season back in the Potomac District Tournament Championship. Potomac Falls got revenge 68-62 in the region final. This is the rubber match. Who wins? Potomac Falls. I agree. Potomac Falls. Yeah, and, and then you're right. It is interesting. Freedom's coming in, what, 17-11? Coming into the tournament, yeah. And they, they're probably better than the record. I'm not sure they beat your – I don't want to throw salt in the moon here. I'm not sure they beat your team or Norview. I'm really not sure they do. Well, and y'all are region semifinalists. And and Potomac Falls is a strong, what, 26-1, but maybe Very good team, good. but they haven't played as tough a schedule as the 7 5 7 8 4 teams. Jeff Halls has won two titles before. they got a great team. Ian Anderson going to Christopher Newport. You heard an interview a few weeks back on the 7 5 7 at 6. He's a great player. They don't have the depth, the athleticism, the overall talent – of the Verina, Mori, Bird, Green Run teams. It's again another another idea that we should be reseeding when we get into the states. But uh, I'll go Potomac Falls. I'm with you on that. Who would like to see Mori Verina in the state championship game? It would be perfect. It'd Absolutely. be great. Uh, class six on the girls' side. Well, Ocean Lakes was down big, came roaring back. Lisa Merriweather's Dolphins, but in the end, James River had the final run. They beat them 72 to 63 to set up a. All Richmond matchup in the semis as Cosby eliminated Western Branch 46 to 34. Good years on the list for Western Branch and Ocean Lakes. Just too much of Cosby, a defending champ, and James River, who also had been in the state tournament a year ago as well. Yeah, it's a shame to see them both go out. You'd always hope that at least one of them goes in. Um, I just hate to see it. But Cosby, you know, traditional powerhouse. I think they, they take down James River. Um, but I think there'll be some trouble with them getting in the state championship. I would concur with you. I, I think that's going to happen. Cosby's the, the team to beat now. Woodbridge beat South Lake 75-39. T.C. Williams, the runner-up in that same region, Region 6C, eliminated a freshman-led Madison team, 61-54. So Woodbridge, T.C. Williams, in a rematch. I like Woodbridge a lot, Ed. They're 27-1. and one. I, They might be the team that can take down Cosby in the state finals in what is Rachel Mead's final season as coach. Yeah, I, I see Woodbridge, Cosby in the final, but I see Cosby winning. 
go. I'll go Woodbridge. You take Cosby. We'll do. We'll do. And just make sure you bring the, the pudding as well. Uh, class six on the boys' side. That's a bad reference. I know. Lance Bill Town. Lance Town, seventy-two fifty-five as the Eagles jumped out eight to nothing. Ed within fifty-five seconds of the game. Lance Town boys really bringing the pressure defense. And again, inside you have that size with Michael Christmas going to JMU. Josh Petitma had 12 points. Christmas had 21. And just a balanced attack on the perimeter with Christian Jones, Donald Hand Jr., Lamont Oliphant and company. They win it 72-55 over James River. And they will see Oscar Smith, a winner, 78-65 over Colonial Forge. Carl Chavis, 25 points for them inside. Torrey Jordan added 15. And then the freshman, Kenyon Giles, with 16 off the bench. Oscar Smith, Lancetown, the rematch at Kellum High School on Monday. Dare to make a pick on this one, sir? Oh, boy. I want Oscar Smith because they're Why? out of my district. You don't want Lancetown? I'm You're... picking Lancetown to win it. Are you? Okay. Lancetown to win it. Uh, uh, Smith, I would go with Smith on it because they're out of my district uh, in terms of favoring your own district team. But I, I just, I'm impressed. I don't understand so that, friendly. by the way, your district. Like, Thomas doesn't root for... Ohio State or Michigan, and they're from his district or conference, the Big Ten. Well, college might be a little different. Oh. High school, I, I have loyalty. But they're rivals. Don't you, True. like, say, True. down with your rival. I want you to lose. True. I mean, <laughs> that'd be the, I made it a little bit of old school idea that you, you want your teams that you play on a regular to, to shine. Supposedly makes you look a little bit better because you play against teams that are winning, <laughs> winning, winning. But at Lansdowne, I just think, has too much power. Up front, I just I love the rebound, and they really dig in on defense, and they share the ball very well. So I, I just think that that's that's it. But it's going to be interesting. Oh, because, listen, go ahead. The Smith can win that game. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. That, that go either way. I, agree. I just think you're a semi phony. No, that's all. No, I want Oscar Smith. I'm picking Lance. All right. Other side of the bracket. I tell you what, it's not a foregone conclusion. The winner of that game wins the state final. Although a lot of people from here believe that, and and they're they're not alone to believe that. Lake Braddock, one hundred and three. Did it again to eighty three over South Lakes. That is the sixth or seventh time I've lost count. They've scored over a hundred. Remember, they lost that game in the Lake Braddock championship to Green Run, like one hundred and five to ninety two or something. But they, I'm telling you, if they play Oscar Smith or Lance, and it could be first to triple digits. It could be literally 101 and 99 going into the fourth quarter. It could be... I don't think Lance that will let them play that way, but Oscar Smith might. Nah, well, might. yeah, Oscar Smith and Lake Braddock, yeah, you're talking... Track meet. Wow. Track meet and a ton of points. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I mean, I, I want to see a track meet. Lance Town and Lake Braddock, very contrasting style. Yeah, that would be interesting to see the, the great defense to White Robinson known that's the trademark of them against the, the running gun offense of Lake Braddock. That could also be fascinating to watch, too. I kind of want to see Lake Braddock get to the final just the way they play. South County, the defending state champ, standing in their way. Ed, they won 72-58 to over Patriot. The fifth meeting this year coming up between Lake Braddock and South County. Lake Braddock has won three of the four meetings, and I got a funny hunch South County might get them this time. Got a funny hunch, but I'm taking Lake Braddock. I'm going Braddock, too, because i got to see them. I want to see them against Lansdowne. Dude, well, I've watched about eight or nine of their films this year. They, it's head-spinning. And they do they do something that you used to like to do. They like to sub four or five guys at a time. And then they, the one thing you didn't do, they just shoot threes relentlessly. They've had a game this year where they've taken, this is no lie, Thomas, 71 threes this year in a game. They're like the Houston Rockets. They're just shooting from everywhere. It's the future of basketball. <laughs> yeah, that's Only pretty three much. Pointers. Wait till we add the four-point line, Matt. Oh, it'll be it'll be scary. They might be they might be scoring 140 a game. Hmm. But the question is, can they defend Oscar Smith or Lansdowne? And I'm not so sure they can. So we'll find out. That'll wrap up the scores from last night. And before we take a break and go to Kip Sutton, we're going to talk to the living legend, formerly of Smithfield, now of Surrey County, Keith. Keith, I saw you last night. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing, man? How are you? I'm doing all right. You doing hey, all right? Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How you doing? Hey, y'all, how you doing as well? I'm okay, except for a knee injury. I'm okay. Oh, you get, oh, your knee get better. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go under the knife, Keith. That's Keith, he's got to stop going to the dance floor, right? If your knee's hurting, you shouldn't be dancing, right? Yeah, you can be dancing. You can be relaxing and sit back. That's I got, right. I got dancer's knee. Yes, sir. Uh, last night, when I, my, my nephew, I told him, when after the game, he said, I'm going to bring He said, it, 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 he, he was happy last night. I, I talked to him last night after the game. He was happy. 
You know, he was kind of, he was nervous a little bit. I was nervous. I was sitting there nervous a little bit last night. You sound like you were very nervous, as, as a lot of people were in the stands. 11 point lead disappeared, but Monty Pope hitting a game winner. I tell you what, I've gotten a chance to see two uh, buzzer beaters this postseason. Keith, uh, we've had some exciting finishes here across the 757, huh? Yes, it was, it, it was, t- it, 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 it's getting tight down to the wire. It's, it's down to the final four. Like I say, everybody say down to the final four. It, it, that, Keith, it, I got to ask it, a question. A couple years ago, um, when, when uh, your your team Smithfield hit that buzzer shot against Lake Taylor, you were on the floor swimming. Did you do that last night? And I jumped on when I had my nephew on the power line with my nephew last night. Okay, so you weren't die- you weren't swimming on the floor. No, but no. there was somebody. We'll show you the video during break here, Ed. There was a guy that, and someone actually uh, replied to it that, that had me just on the floor laughing. There was a guy that did a. WWE style jump off the rope move on the dog pile. I'm, I'm, thankfully, Monty Pope didn't get hurt because that could have been dangerous. But uh, everybody did storm the floor. It was uh, a pretty wild scene there at Sussex Central last night. And also, uh, I was uh, I just I, when I got a show like that, sir, I was I was in motion to support my nephew. He's 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 he's, he's, he's done a lot, man. I've done a lot for him. I help him out during the summertime. To get his game, get to get to get his game right, you know, he can he can shoot. He, if you if you see him in the game one time, he can he can shoot. What number is your nephew again, by the way? Oh, he's number twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. He, he a junior this year. He he will return it with with team this year. You know, I got another nephew. He was playing baseball. He graduated. He had um, Tom and Nelson now. Uncle Keith. They call you Uncle Keith for a reason. Yes, sir. I follow him all the time, and I'm. He, he he said, oh, "Okay, you come see me play basketball." I said, "I'm coming on the bandway with you, with you, man. You, I want you to bring it home for all for us, man." Well, Keith, you have the possibility, Surrey boys and girls could be uh, champions. Yeah, I hope, I hope the, uh, uh, the girls and the boys bring it home. You know, they happen to come of Surrey, and they're they're well they're well nice of being Surrey. They they and the hospitality, they they friendly, they speak to you. Now, they, it, 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 you can't take a lot of them. And uh, also, I got a cousin. It's on the staff at uh, at Surrey, um, Irvin Jones. Is my, he related to us, and my, as my cousin, um, and uh, I talked to him last night too. Yeah, it was great atmosphere out there. Terrific turnout, and um, should be a good battle with Rappahannock and rematch. And the girls are moving on to take on Riverheads, creating a little bit of a rivalry there with Riverheads. Uh, Who's been known for their football dominance? They got a new football coach, and then Thad Wheeler, formerly the football coach at Warhill. But I think we're going to get a rematch of Surrey girls and Perry McClure Keith, and then the boys' side. Ed and I both like J.I. Burton to play Surrey in the final. I think it'll be J.I. Burton and um, Surrey in the, in the state championship, and um, Perry McClure girls playing the Surrey play the Coolers in the state um, championship game. So you concur with us, all right? Yes, and also last thing for our L. Uh, a lot of people say about the people's fanless, they're going to be the dangerous team. They got to go with John Marshall. Um, and then they, they, they played in the, in the regular season this year in the tournament somewhere. They did not. I don't believe so. I'm double checking that as uh, you asked that. I don't think they did play this year during regular season, no. Um, I, I, I'm not have had a matchup wise between them two teams. I know they got a kid from John Marshall, about 16. They do. Roosevelt Wheeler, he's a sophomore. He's originally from the Hampton Roads area, was. I believe playing with Hampton Ed was it last year in the fall league and then he transferred to John Marshall right before big kid. I think he was playing with Hampton. He was either the fall league or summer again? league. Roosevelt Wheeler. He did play with Hampton. I remember taking photos. So I, didn't, I didn't imagine this. I think it was in the yeah. fall league last year. But anyhow, he transferred to John Marshall right before the start of his freshman season. Um, he's a factor. DeMar McCray on the wing is a factor. That's the matchup to watch. McCray on the wing against Kyrie Temple and how he defends him. Remember, much like we've talked about with Ashley James at Green Run, uh, both though dazzling in the open court, staying out of foul trouble is important for Temple in this game. They cannot afford going any stretch of five to eight minutes without him on the court because it could be dangerous against John Marshall. Yes, sir, and, uh, and y'all have a nice day. I hope 757 seven, seven, seven bring it home this year. All right, we do too, Keith. Thank you so much. Yes, when we return, we'll be chatting with Kip Sutton, girls basketball coach of the Deep Creek Lady Hornets. They take on Lake Taylor coming up on Tuesday night right here on your home for sports. High school, college, and pro. We have it all on ESPN Radio 94.1. Recapping another busy week of prep sports, it's high school sports talk on ESPN Radio 94.1.
Back here on High School Sports Talk with the coach Ed Young. Matt Hatfield here with you on ESPN Radio 94.1. And Ed, we got a special guest on the line. His ladies, two wins away from a state championship and a uh, place in immortality in its school's history over there in Chesapeake. The Deep Creek Lady Hornets, a winner last night over Monacan, 67 to 54 in the quarterfinal round to move to 24 and 2 overall. Jada Johnson with 21 points, six rebounds. Maya Thomas adding 16 points and five assists as they close the game on a 16-6 to six run to set up a state semifinal date with Lake Taylor. We say good morning and congrats to Coach Kip Sutton. Coach, how's it feel the morning after a state tournament victory? Uh, how y'all doing this morning? Doing well. I was pretty, pretty exhausted. Um, we're not uh, used to playing this late in the year, and um, we, I'm feeling the brunt of it this morning. Definitely excited. But uh, it's definitely uh, different when you're actually going through it. Ed Young here, and congrats so far to this point. And uh, now what's interesting is you, you get Lake Taylor, uh, another meeting, and you're very familiar with them. And, and I know your kids are not going to back down and be intimidated like a lot of other teams. Um, what's it like now you know, in terms of state situation where a lot of people are playing they've never seen people they've never seen got to get a lot of tape but for you that's not necessary what's that feeling like well you know playing uh you know late term the last two years um they knocked us out of the um uh regional semifinals <clears throat> at their place um to uh you know to go to the state and um we 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 are familiar with them um, we did get a chance to play them on Friday for the regional championship and uh, ended up losing by 13. But uh, I thought our girls, you know, um, you know, stood tall. And um, it is it is different when you, you play in somebody else that, you know, that you know. But I am familiar with their team. And um, I don't know. We got to see how it goes. Um, I'm familiar territory right now. Well, they've got a player that's dealing with an injury in Janiah Quinley, the sophomore standout, figures to be an all-Tywater, all-state performer. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you've had a couple of key players um, this sign, one of which uh, out with an injury in Adriana Ship of Longwood, correct? She's still out for you? Yeah, um, Adriana Ship, um, she's a senior. She she tore ACL um, in Game 5 against Indian River. Okay. She actually did it in the pregame warm-ups, just a, a freak accident. But um, she, yeah, she she is um, already committed to uh, you know Longwood as far as uh, going going D one, and uh, this this just makes this year even special because she she really worked hard to get to this point, and um, she she don't get the experience on the court, but uh, we definitely uh, you know want to do it for her, um, and also we got Amaya uh, Thomas, who's uh, signed to University of Maryland Eastern Shore. These girls committed before the season started, and uh, yeah, just um, on the injury, you know, aspect, um, you know, prayers go out to uh, Quinley. She's a ph- phenomenal player, and um, I-, I hope she gets healthy. And um, but we we dealt with it when uh, when Ship got hurt, and uh, and um, that's the one thing that I'm really proud about. You know, this team this year, we really adjusted to somebody who um, we was looking for about 17 to 18 points this year. And this whole team has just stepped, stepped up collectively. And I'm pretty sure uh, Lake Taylor's going to um, adjust as well. No, I was getting to it. I misspoke when I said of Longwood. She's going along with an Adrian Ship. Maya Thomas, as you mentioned, going to Maryland Eastern Shore as well. But without Ship, it feels like Jada Johnson has really raised her game. Was that something you had spoke with her, or has it just come naturally for her that she's evolved into the player she's been for you here lately? Well, it's it's really not even been lately. She uh she started for me as a freshman last year. Um <clears throat> we went over to Lake Teller and we lost last year. I thought she really spread her wings when, you know, Lake Teller really um when they knocked us out, she really stepped up in that game. I can't remember the exact points, but I know she um it was a hostile environment and they actually she actually just just showed um uh, a lot of resilience and she had over twenty points that game when they uh, ran a box and one on Maya, so um, I think um, she she has definitely evolved even more. 
these girls, when they play together, it's really hard to um, defend us because we they, they both are such, um, you know, equal threats. And um, it's, um, it's, that, that backcourt for me has is, is been um, probably the the, uh, the, the, the the best thing for us. So not only did, has Jada stepped up, you know, this year and been the player that I knew she was going to be, but it's other people that, that has really helped and contributed that it don't still it don't show up in the stat sheet what these girls do uh, for this team. Um, talking to um, just want to say their names with Tia Banks and uh, Kiara Shepard and Jada Richardson and I mean I, I want to say the whole team, um, our second team, all um, all all um, all conference player um, Shakira Perry been big all year, and I, I'm not trying to slight anybody without naming the whole team, but everybody has picked up the slack when Adriana went down, and I couldn't be more proud of them. We're chatting with Deep Creek Head Girls Basketball Coach Kip Sutton, his ladies victorious last night over Monica in 67-54 to in the quarterfinals, and they'll move on to the state semifinals coming up on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. We understand that'll be at Churchland High School, part of a double dip. The Deep Creek Girls playing the Lake Taylor Girls at 6, and the Lake Taylor Boys taking on Louisa following that. It's High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94. One a fine season, Ed, for Deep Creek at 24-2, and two, and they're not done yet. No, Coach, you know, you, you kind of read my mind. I was going to ask you, when you have a great season like this, you know, we, we kind of know the, the top players, and you mentioned some of them. And I was going to ask you, who is that one person, not getting a lot of ink, but you know, the coaching staff knows, that this girl is the is, has to get a lot of credit for that. Right here. And you said about, you know, you don't want to slight anybody without mentioning your team. Of course, Coach, you could talk about anybody you want to. Yeah, um, and it, it's hard when you, you know, coach, you put me in these situations because I appreciate everybody, but it is um, two girls that I really want to um, just say something about. It's a girl named Bella Dunn. Uh, <clears throat> she's been with me for four years, been with the program, her sister played for me, and um, she she don't pass the look test, but her, she, she never gets rattled. She'll hit the big three. Uh, when we need to, uh, I'm starting uh, three sophomores, but when she come off the bench, she really brings a sense of calmness to the situation. Um, and um, you will not never see her name on any all-region team or anything like that, but she has uh, really been the the off, you know, for, for our team in those tough situations when we um, – uh, she's in the game at the end when uh, we got to make critical decisions. I'm very proud of her. And there's another girl, um, Atia Banks. Um, she uh, was projected uh, when she was in the eighth and ninth grade. She was one of the better eighth graders around here. She had um, ACL um, tear. Didn't want to play basketball anymore. And she came back last year. And um, she she's just been a big help. And when Adriana went out, she was – one of the ones that's, that's really come in and uh, rebound for us and play smart. And like I said, Coach, I don't mean to not slight anybody, but those two girls right there, um, not only, um, you know, uh, first, you know, first class, you know, basketball players, but first class individuals as well. Coach, also you mentioned a little bit earlier, you're not used to getting this deep and playing and, and it is a great experience, but Somebody that hasn't seen your team, how would you explain uh, to them what your identity is and how you got to this point? Yeah, when we walk on the court, we don't pass the look test. Um, I just noticed that last night uh, when uh, Maya went up for the, uh, they talked to the captains and uh, their guards were they had three people up there. Maya walked up there by herself and they looked at they looked at her and this. Like the look was like this, Maya Thomas. She five three, and um, they looked at her, and we they they they, I, I, they might even smirked a little bit. But she she's used to getting it, used to being um, uh, doubted, you know, by a lot of people. And I just think that our identity, you know, just just as a whole, uh, we we want to be aggressive and we want to play fast and uh, in transition. Um, we we do have multiple guards that can handle the ball. Um, haven't really um, been bothered too much about pressure. Late Teller probably gave us, you know, the most pressure when we played them uh, last Friday, but I thought we handled that, 
you know, well. But um, the the one thing uh, about this group, they've been together for a long time. Past, I've been on this show and talked about how young we were. And this year, that senior leadership is really, you know, paying off for us. And it's helping those sophomores that's playing um, a lot of minutes as well. So uh, hopefully they will say our defense and how um, how our guard play, um, uh, you know, really impacts the game. Get you out on this one, Coach. We thank you for the time. I wish you all the best coming up on Tuesday night against Lake Taylor as one of the 757 girls basketball teams will be punching its ticket to the state championship in Class 4 coming up on Thursday at 6 o'clock against either Pulaski County and Carroll County. And this is not meant in any slight towards either of those schools. And I know we had this conversation last year, I believe, with uh, Mo Fafana of Kings Fork after uh, their quarterfinal win, setting up a matchup in the semis with Lake Taylor. And, of course, Millbrook went on to win and be the undefeated team as state champs. But how do you how do you view this setup we have now where A plays B in both the quarters and semis? As a coach, would you like to see that change where you're on opposite sides of the brackets where the possibility could exist that you play in the state championship? What's your opinion on that? Um, Matt, they, at first I, they were you know switching it every year, which I thought that was a good thing. Uh, I thought that was the fairest thing, but then um, they they seem to stay to keep keep us all on one side. Um, it's honestly, uh, people say it's fair, not fair. I mean, I, I just know for me and myself and my situation and playing Latell again. I mean, Latell is the best in our region, and, and um, I mean, whether we play them in the states or the semis, it's going to go through them. Um, not slighting anybody else, but even last year it showed that when they was in the same situation, um, Lake Teller, you know, uh, played and then they lost, I think, to Millbrook. So it's no slight to the other side. I don't know if they, you know, if they got it right or wrong, but I'm telling my girls and everybody that's in my camp that um, we got to go out, you know, and play play the best. Uh, we, we've tried to do that all year and to prepare us for this moment, no matter how it's set up. And we just, we just blessed, blessed to be here, man. Well, it should be an entertaining battle nonetheless as either Deep Creek or Lake Tittles girls will be moving on to the state championship coming up on Thursday. You can watch them go head-to-head on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. Tickets $10 over at Churchland High School, part of a double dip with the Lake Tittles boys following up against Louisa. Coach, we thank you so much for the time this morning on the show. Congrats on the season so far, and best of luck on Tuesday night, all right? Thanks, man. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. All right. Kip, good luck to you. Thank you. Kip Sutton, head girls basketball coach at Deep Creek High School in Chesapeake, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Doing big things over there at Deep Creek, Ed, 24-2 and on the season, knocking out Monacan, a past, what, three-time state champ, I think they are. Great program. And uh, now they have another great program to battle that in Lake right. Taylor. So, But, you know, that familiarity is going to help them. They're not going to be, you know, awestruck like some other teams, like, like when a lot of teams play Prince's Anne. Sure. You know, girls. It's like, oh, boy, we got to play. I don't think Deep Creek will have that feeling. The last time the Maury boys won a state championship, when was it? Do you know, Ed? Do you know, Thomas? The last time Maury boys won a state championship. Neither one of you was born. You should get Matt Stenberg in here. He would He know. might know. He's a Maury grad. That's his school. Do you have a guess, Ed? I'm just tell you. 1940. You're close. 1927. Whoa. 27. 1927. They've been to the final four round. 14 times now since then and never won the championship. 1927. Brandon Plummer's going to try to bring them a championship. They're two wins away. They play Verona Monday night at Norview and Coach Plummer's our guest next right here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Don't go anywhere. It's your home for sports. ESPN Radio 94.1. This is High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Hour one in the books, now hour two here on High School Sports Talk as we are getting ready for state championship games coming up this week. Wednesday is Class 6 and Class 5, Thursday is Class 4 and Class 3, and Saturday, next 
Saturday, the 9th of March is Class 2 and Class 1, and a guy hoping to be playing on Wednesday in the Class 5 state championship, but they got a big one coming up on Monday at Norview High School against the defending state champs in Verona. The Maury Commodores victorious last night in the state quarterfinals over perennial Richmond Power, L.C. Bird, 50-42. to And joining us now on the show, Ed, is the head boys basketball coach in year two at the helm of the Maury Commodores. He is the Eastern District Coach of the Year and the Region 5A Coach of the Year. We say good morning and congrats to Brandon Plummer. Coach, how you feeling this morning? Man, I'm feeling pretty good, man. A little, a little tired, a little tired, but, you know, feeling, feeling pretty good. Hey, this time here, there's no time for rest, right? That's right about that. You're right about that. <laughs> well, tell me about last night's ball game against L.C. Bird. Uh, many of us in the media uh, all year had talked about Veron and Bird. They could meet three or four times this year. Uh, it could be the two teams that are essentially playing in the state championship. But I think your kids relish the opportunity of having them come to the 7-5-7. As we talked about a couple weeks ago, the 8 4 has been given a 7-5-7 some beatings in a lot of sports, football, basketball, and last night a chance for some revenge, huh? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And, uh, you know, my guys, they, they just took on the challenge. And, you know, last week, I mean, the other day when we played against Green Run, you know, yeah, we wanted to win the region. But, you know, I told the guys, we're not trying to take that ride to Richmond. You know, we want those guys to come here. We got a, we got a great opportunity, you know, to, you know, have a team come down here and play us. Yeah, how important was that going back to that region championship game? First, first off, before we even get to that semifinal game against Norview, an Eastern District rival, you had to play three times to games that went down to five points or less this year. So you're probably glad you were done with them to escape there last Saturday night at the Scope. You win the region championship. People always say when you're in the championship game, it, it's not as relevant a game. But it was important from the standpoint of not having to go to Richmond like Green Run did last night for Run, and now you get Verona on your turf, right? Yes, we do, and I oh man, I can't, I can't wait for that game. You know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great game, man. They're they're a great team, like you said, defending state champs. They got some great ball players, you know, that can do a lot of lot of lot of good things. But I feel like you know we match up with them pretty well. Um, I'm just you know my, my guys are just ready to get it on. Yeah, at four, uh, six players on Verona's roster averaging between 7.7 and 14.4 points per game. A very balanced attack, much like Maury's squad is Ed. Yeah, Ed, Brandon and I, Ed Young here, and congrats to getting to this point so far. And I know you got a lot more work to do, and yeah. uh, tall task with the defending champion. I had a chance to play them in uh, team camp at CNU this summer, and and they were missing a, a kid or two, and they were. I was very impressed with that ball club, and you know, they've won what forty six of the last forty seven. But then again, you got some kids too that uh, have shown very brightly. Let's talk about your squad and, and mention whoever you want to mention. Um, well, it's, it, 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 it starts off with, uh, with my punt guard, my floor general, Chase Coleman, uh, very, very solid punt guard. You know, I know a lot of, a lot of teams where a lot of, a lot of coaches, you know, they, you know, they talk about him scoring the ball and not scoring the ball a lot and being aggressive. I mean, Chase is just doing what I asked him to do. You know, it, it is a plus when he is being aggressive and, and scoring the ball at times, but Chase is really in control of the team. And, you know, he knows when to settle the game down and, you know, put people in position. And he's, he's just a real floor general. And, you know, my other part, my other guard, Brian Phillips, we know that's my, that's my pit bull. That's what I call him. That's my pit bull. So when it's time to, you know, really pick up the tempo, uh, that's who we know we need to go to. But, yet, you know, these last few games, my bigs have been stepping up real big. and Definitely Clarence Rupert. Clarence Rupert, you know, from – where he was at last year to the point that he's at now, I mean, he's just taking everything that the, uh, myself and my coaching staff, he's just taking it in stride and just and just working. He understands it's just all about hard work. And, man, those, those guys, man, they have really grown together. Yeah, very balanced attack for Maury with the likes of Coleman, Phillips, Rupert, Menzia, and others. We're talking with Brandon Plummer. He is the second-year head boys basketball coach of the Maury Commodores, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Get ready for a showdown coming up on Monday night at Norview High School as the Commodores take on the 24-1 Verona Blue Devils defending state champs. It's ESPN Radio 94.1, Ed. Hey, Brandon, I also want to get back one more question I wanted to ask you off that last one. Who is that one guy? I asked Coach Sutton from D Creek with the girls. Uh, not getting a lot of ink, but you and the staff know if it wasn't for this kid, we probably may not be here. Do you have somebody in mind? Um, 
Are you? I mean, are we, are we talking about somebody off, like off, off my team? Like, yes, we, yes. Off, yeah, off your squad is that one guy. Maybe not getting the headlines like some of your other key players are. Oh, that, my my kid Des, Desmond Wright, Desmond Wright, and, and Corey Hollis. Desmond Wright, uh, we call him DJ. He comes off the bench. I mean, he's a real energy guy. You know, he's a real big spark for us because. You know he can he can knock down some shots when he's open and on the defensive end he's I mean he's a guy that's going to get all up in you. Not the biggest guy, he's not the biggest guy, but you know he has he has a big heart. He has a big heart. You know he, he he's like a lion to me in my eyes. And Corey Hollis, my other my other forward, you know he hits the glass pretty hard. And you know I I just I just appreciate that about him because like you said those those things that don't show up in the paper the dirty work. You know, you got to have some guys that's willing to do the dirty work, and, and it doesn't matter. Brandon, another thing I wanted to ask you. Of course, we all know that you were a pretty good player at Booker T. In fact, I'm still mad at you because uh, I think when you all crushed <laughs> us, I think you dropped uh, 14 <laughs> on us and I think 10 rebounds, and uh, and you shot the pistols at me as you went by and hit that. He didn't do that. Me. He didn't do that. Now Brandon does that stuff. When he was younger, he was crazy. <laughs> remember, he jumped up on a table and almost broke your computer. He, he did that? almost do that. I did tell him See, about that. See, he's crazy. Yeah. When he was younger, crazy. he was crazy. He was, he was hey, in the look, moment. I showed, guys, I showed my guys that film the other day, the championship game the other day. I said, look at me on the table. I said, Hatfield always talk about that. You know, <laughs> all those messages. Yeah, I almost broke his computer. <laughs> well, listen, you got the money now. You could have bought me a new one. So. Yeah, I could have bought you a new one now. <laughs> but Brandon, the Brandon thing I want to ask you is, you know, it's year two for you. And, of course, you replaced a guy around here everybody knows, Jack Baker, Hall of Famer, a multi-multi-win guy every year. Um, how was that? You know, now that you're in year two, going through that, the difference between year one, taking over year one, getting through, and now you got the opportunity to play for state title. Talk about that situation. Man, it's, uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. And um, I told Coach Baker the other day, you know, I was joking with him. I said, you ain't tell me it was this hard. You know, he started laughing. I said, man, I just told him, I just said, thank you, man, for believing in me and trusting me with your program. And, I mean, he just, you know, when we when we talked to each other, he just looked like a, you know, a proud father. You know, and I, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate everything that he has done for me. You know, the talks that we've had, you know, some of the wisdom that he's given me. And I'm just, I'm just thankful for it. But to be in a position that we are in now and, you know, I really feel like we can get it done, you know, and and, and get that first one ever. It's, it's just it's, it's, it's ecstatic, man. Well, and then the other thing I got to piggyback is on, and we just kidded about you being a player, and you were a pretty good player. Now, that's being serious. But you Thanks, played coach. for a guy, Darren Sanderlin. So you, you played for two very distinct different coaches, both winners, but they mm-hmm. did it different ways. Talk a little bit about playing for Dar- Darren, and I don't think he's listening, so you can open up on a couple crazy Darren stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that. It was funny because he he came to the game last night, and I know him. He has never worn his state championship jacket, never. And he came through the gym yesterday, and he had that jacket on. I said, "Uh oh, he in the game with me." <laughs> and so, man, I mean, just playing for him and being able to you know coach beside him and learn so much from him—not just you know about basketball, but just being a man. And the things that he he taught me that I can instill in my guys has really helped out a whole lot. And I I can recall, you know, around this time uh, when I was playing, you know, he just told us just to believe. Like, everything you just got to believe, you know, because at this point it's just all about execution. You know, it ain't too many about X's and O's and all that. It's just executing and, and who wanted the most. And you got to make your free throws and, you know, and, and decrease your turnover. Decrease your turnovers, but you know between him, him and Bate, you know playing for you know in my eyes two Hall of Fame coaches. I mean, I mean with Coach Bate already being a Hall of Fame coach, that I just feel like you know the the way they the way they prepare is pretty much the same, and it's just you know they just instilled it in me a whole lot to make me you know I mean a good coach that I am. And you mentioned free throws, two enormous ones from Clarence Rupert last Saturday with two seconds to go against Norby. We're chatting with Brandon Plummer, head boys basketball coach, the Maury Commodores. A couple seconds left, or a couple minutes left from him here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1 as they get set for a state semifinal matchup against the reigning state champs of Verona coming up on Monday night, 7 o'clock at Norview High School. Commodores trying to win their first state title since the 1920s, 1927. And coach, how much of an advantage is this for you being someone where you can relate? 
relate with these kids. Right? I've been in these moments, these situations. Going back to your Booker T team with Miles Holly and Antoine Perry and that crew in 2006. You you had a great comeback against Maury, then you lost, I think, later to Wilson, but you went on that magical tournament run beating Scotty Reynolds and company in championship. And this year's team, you had that 21-point lead against Granby, and it felt like a defining moment looking back on it. A lot of people thought, all right, Maury, uh, they can't turn a corner. But since then, you've had a different laser focus. What have you talked about with the guys uh, kind of during this journey here? Um, you know, I, got, I, tell, I tell my guys, I mean, with every season, it's a process. You know, it's a journey. And you have to enjoy the journey. Yeah, you know, everybody wants to go undefeated. But, you know, how, how often does that really happen? You know, and so you, you, you live and you learn. You know, you take, those, you take those moments, you take those losses, and you grow from them. So now, you know, later on in the season, you don't have to worry about those situations, you know, and our focus had to pick up a little bit more. You know, that's what was worrying me about my team in the beginning was our focus. You know, a lot of those guys, you know, at first they really couldn't see themselves becoming champions, like all the way, you know, standing at the top at the end. But the more we played and the more, you know, we started seeing, you know, seeing our weaknesses and turning them into our strengths, the guys really, they really started believing in themselves, and they started accepting everything that myself and my coaching staff were saying. And so, once everybody accepted their role, you know, accepted being being subbed out, or or you know, we giving you constructive criticism. Once they accepted that, man, we just we just took off from there. Brandon, um, I'm assuming you've you've already seen some some film on Verona. What do they present that's a little different than what you face, let's say, even against Bird or in, in the regionals against, you know, even Green Runner Norview? Much different. I know you alluded to the fact earlier, hey, it's about just executing right now. I mean, you just got to do what you're supposed to be doing. What do you, what do you see in Verona? Uh, they, yes, they're a solid team. They're a solid team at pretty much every position. Uh, they got shooters. They got guys that, you know, that can hit the glass very hard. Um, they, what I see very well with them is that they make adjustments. They don't get rattled. They don't get rattled a lot. So it doesn't, I mean, whatever you go to, if you try to press them, I mean, I feel like you, you, you can, you may get a few, um, turnovers, but like I said, they don't get rattled and they make adjustments. They make adjustments. So, you know, when it comes to our game preparation, we got to make sure we on the same page with whatever defense that we in. Um, but we have to meet them. We have to meet them at the glass because they they get a lot of offensive rebounds. So we gotta hold we gotta be able to hold them to one shot. Well it should be and, a four. Um, go ahead, coach. Yeah. And um um I um I know they don't really go too deep on their bench. You know, I I've seen and notice that a whole lot, you know, so we, you know, as hard as my guys go and we go to the bash, I feel like, you know, we can we can get them in a little foul trouble. We may have a, a real strong opportunity. To pull away. Yeah, and your bench has that stepped up here in this postseason. You mentioned some names like DJ Wright and uh, Hollis and obviously Keyshawn Tonsiller. So it should be a fun battle coming up on Monday night. Looking forward to it. The Maury Commodores taking on the defending state champion Verona Blue Devils. Get on over to Norview High School on Monday, 7 o'clock. If you're a local 757 Hoops fan or a Maury alum, Maury fan, go out there and support the Commodores. Two wins away from a state championship. Coach, we wish you all the best coming up on Monday. Hope to see you again on Wednesday, and uh, we'll be there for you, all right? All right. Thank you. You bet. Good luck, Brandon. All right. Thanks, Coach. Coach Brandon Plummer of the Maury Commodores, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. And we've talked about it before in regards to football, following up legends. You know, you go back to the days at Phoebus, Bill D, you know, passed away, and then went to Oscar Smith after Rich Morgan and the job Scott Johnson had to do after following him. Following Jack Baker is no small, easy task for years. People said, I don't want to be the guy to follow that guy. Brandon Plummer's got them now two wins away from a place in history and winning the program's first state title in 92 years. It's a long time. Yeah, that's, My that's gosh. But, but Brandon taking over, I think, in an instantly in two years, he's brought in good credibility to himself, which, which he had anyways. He, you know, he played for Darren, coached under Darren, coached under Jack. But I think right now that you know he's got this team where it is right now. they got one win away from playing for a state title. Um, I, I think he has put his thumbprint on this team. He had it on it already. Don't forget now, he was the assistant there. He wasn't somebody that came out of nowhere and was hired. He he knew the situation. He knew what he was facing. I think he's handled it with a tremendous amount of grace 
and and uh, respect towards Jack and the program and uh, he the credit he's getting he is absolutely worthy of it. And let me tell you something. Uh, there's only going to be 12 teams, six on the boys' side, six on the girls, that are, are happy at the end of the year with the state championship, but with the last game that is happy. Um, you get out of class, and this is meant as no, you know, knock to other divisions, but class five, you're in it every year. It is just a meat grinder. There's about 12 to 15 teams that could very well be at the at the end. So it is, it is, it's hard in every level. It's like put the the Madden video game sliders to like. All pro, all Madden mode. It's super hard in the Division Five ranks for basketball. Yeah, you know, I don't really. I, I look around, but I don't look around. I have to concentrate on, on on us and who our next opponent is. And if we ever get deep like this year, we able to get into the regional. You've got to really know about some of those other teams. But there's so many that you have to kind of keep tabs on and notes on all year because you know if your program is worthy of that, you know you're going to move on. You're going to do some early homework. And it, for Region Five, it's a whole lot of homework. This morning we're here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Give us a call at 757-687-9494, only on ESPN Radio 94.1. And now back to Matthew Hetfield and the evil basketball coach. Blast you and young! Ah, Stewie made his triumphant return. It's March. He, can't, he comes out in March like spring. Spring flowers. Spring April showers. Or Mayflowers, and we get Stewie, too. Stewie. Man, that made me nervous because I haven't seen that little guy run around the studio in a long time. But, uh, you know, uh, Stewie is who he is. And uh, we not only have Stewie, we have someone else that's uh, pretty well known as well. Yeah. Um, my partner here uh, had a chance to talk with the uh, head coach at the Surrey Cougars, and it was Chris Brown. He was taking a little bit of a break from his uh, tour. No, not that Chris Brown. Different Chris Brown. Oh, okay. This is different Chris Brown, but uh, Mag, I had a chance to talk to him after uh, his, uh, uh, what was it, 51-13 victory, a warm-up, a little sw- slight sweat last night. Let's hear what he had to say. Okay, I'm here with Surrey head girls basketball coach Chris Brown. His Lady Cougars went at 51-13 to over Alta Vista to move on to the state semifinals. Coach, one more went away from getting back to the state championship where I know you've I wanted to get to from last year at the Siegel Center in Richmond. First quarter, not the start. You wanted 11-6. to Had some misses. Not the greatest offensive play, but second and third quarter. Coach, I don't know how you play much better. 32 nothing. You outscored them and you forced 25 turnovers in that 16-minute stretch. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've been working on, just improving defensively. Communication was the key there. I mean, we had that we were right there, you know, had some pretty good stops, and I mean, we would just have a person that wouldn't rotate or that, you know, wouldn't talk about where they were. So, I um, mean, you know, I told them that we needed to fix it, and, and boy, did they do that. I mean, definitely, get, you know, holding the team, you know, scoreless for two quarters, almost going into the fourth quarter before they got something. And, and we, you know, we just, that, that's where we are, have improved. I mean, just, you know, getting better on the defensive end, I mean, we know that that's going to uh, be, it's going to be very important for us to be able to make those types of stops, in the, you know, as, the, as we go down the line. Yeah, you end up having literally uh, eight different players register a steal for you on three with five apiece with Jasmine Pierce, Neandra Kelly, and Maya Parson. And uh, I think while Jasmine Maya, Pierce, Maya Drew. no, Maya Drew, excuse me, yeah, Maya Drew, and then uh, I think Pierce and Bird, Bracia Bird are the two headliners for this team. But the one that gets forgotten about is Alexis Nelson, double double. She played great inside today. Absolutely. I mean, we're we're uh, 29 games in, uh, and she's had 19 double doubles throughout the season. Yeah, so she's definitely been one of the, one of the improvements. And also, you saw her step out and shoot 15 footers, and um, and so getting rebounds and, and pushing the ball up the floor a little bit in transition. And yeah, I mean that, that that's those are some pieces that I think that have have really improved for, for us uh, since last year. Alexis, and then also Maya Drew. You can see that she's out there on the floor defending guards and, and small forward. So yeah. yeah. And Pierce giving you five assists too. So the ball's moving around the perimeter, getting into yeah. people's hands. Absolutely. I mean, the first couple of years, I mean, everybody played, you know, played to stop Brianna Jones and Jasmine. And I mean, mm-hmm. you know, last year I felt like we didn't have enough irons in the fire. So uh, we went we went to work on it in the summer and got people comfortable scoring the basketball. Well, we spoke about it too around the holiday time where you beefed up the schedule, playing some, whether it be public, private, schools that are top teams in the state. How much have you seen that help with the medal and the confidence of this team as you're almost back in the state championship game? Certainly. I mean, being able to stay in the game and losing the LC Bird by three, playing a very good six-time state champion in Miller, uh, our girls feel very confident about getting out on the floor with anybody. Mm-hmm. 
Last two for you. Um, what do you want to see in the next couple of rounds that you got to sharpen up? It's more on the offense than the defensively, or a, a little bit of both. I mean, you know, get, you know, we want to get off to a good start every game. I mean, that's a, that's one of the things that I'm big on. I mean, I felt like last year in the state championship we kind of got pushed and hit first, and we want to make sure that, that we're the aggressor in that area and, and just finishing around the rim and continue to make free throws. We were doing really well until late in the game. Uh, we, ended, you know, I want to say we ended up somewhere around 13 for 19, but mm -hmm. you know that's an area that you got to be tight at, you know, as as we get down the line. Well, yeah, I mean, team's been uh, forcing turnovers left and right, and patient <laughs> that gives people problems, especially that aren't used to it. Final one, I would think with some teams, boys or girls, they might be a little concerned about a rematch looking past the semifinal round. I don't get that sense with your squad. Do you, do you feel the same way? No, looking past to make that period. No, we, we now we we're going to do it one game at a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, our girls know that you know you, you don't get to a state championship. If you lose in the semi, so we're gonna we're gonna pay, you know dribble with our head up there and figure out who we got next and take it one game at a time. But I will say this: that we've been working really hard, and we know that there are some very good teams out there, and and we want to, we want to definitely play the very best. Well, it's sterling performance from Chris Brown's Lady Cougars to Surrey. They get it done. Two wins away from a championship. Thanks so much. Thank you. So that was Surrey girls basketball coach Chris Brown with us after his team's decisive win, 51-13 to over Alta Vista on the girls' side. It's High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. You're on ESPN Radio 94.1 with the coach Ed Young. I am Matt Hatfield. And Ed, not just the Surrey girls chasing a state title, but the boys two victories away as well. Yeah, um, one of those crazy games where at the buzzer, it's good. And that was Monty Pope for a 41-39 win over Riverheads last night, and obviously uh, my partner Matt Adfield got a chance to catch up, catch up with the uh, star of the moment. And let's let's hear what he had to say right now. Wins away from a state championship after his buzzer beater tonight, forty-one to thirty-nine over Riverheads in the Class One state quarterfinals at Sussex Central. Monty, first career buzzer beater. How's it feel? It feel good. Uh, I wasn't expecting that coming into the game. I was just expecting a good, balanced game. Uh, it was tough. It was up. Let them come back. I ain't had the best game. I f had a lot of foul trouble, but our teammates kept it in there, and I just hit the shot. Uh, your dad and Coach James Pope also told me that you do these all the time in practice, these little one-legged shots. Yeah. I mean, did you know it with 2.8 seconds that it was going to be the ball in your hands and taking that last shot? And I wasn't sure if it was going to get to my hands, but I knew when I grabbed it what I was going to do, and it wasn't really no pressure because the, the ball game was already tied, so it's just practice. Banked it in, right? I think. Yeah, banked it When it goes through, I just saw big last week. Yeah. Goes through celebration. What's going through your mind? Shoot, I'm just, I'm or? just happy that we won, that we pulled it out. I'm just happy that we're moving on. Mm -hmm. You guys were up 11. What did you do to get the lead? What did you not do well to keep the lead? I felt like on defense we did a good job talking and staying disciplined. I think we let up third quarter. They had more momentum. They had more. I guess they wanted it more third quarter, and then I guess we got out of control, complacent, and then they just came back. How tough were they to, I guess, prepare for knowing you hadn't seen them and they're kind of an unorthodox style, right? Yeah, they move a lot. They We have no team like that in our region or district, so they move a lot. They talk, they communicate. They don't have, like, one standout player. Everybody play their role, and they can shoot, they discipline. So it was, it was hard, but we did our research. I think we did good. The Surrey team's got a couple of player year type guys yourself and some more slay. What's it mean for you to win this game with y'all not having your usual numbers? I think you just combined for 17. What's it mean for y'all to win without you guys having your, your normal games? It just means that we have a good support system. We have other good players on our team that step up and do their role. Even when we're not scoring, we have other people that can step up. We're disciplined. We run. We work harder in practice to make sure we get the second and third option. And we're not there, so mm -hmm. confident in us to score when we're not scoring. Um, as the game's ticking down there, are you thinking, no, no, this might go to overtime, we might let's take slip away, or did you feel like, no, nah, we still got the center grass? Be honest. Yeah. I felt like it was 60-30 overtime. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, once I got the ball in my head, I was confident it was going there. And 10% Monty Pope was a game winner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's run. You're going to play coming up against Rappahannock again, I don't know if you know it or not, in the yes. rematch game, state semifinals. Um, what's it going to take to have a great effort and get to the state championship next Saturday at VCU? Uh, last time we played them, they had way more energy. They were way more tougher than us, so we got to step that up. Way better defense. We got to execute on offense, and we got to just stick together. They like to talk a lot. We can't get into that. We just got to play our game. We should be sure. That's Monty Pope to hear tonight with the game winner as Surrey is two wins away from getting rings. Thanks so much. So that was Surrey's Monty Pope with us after his team's thrilling win over Riverheads. Ed, we got 60 seconds left here on this additional high school sports talk before we send you off to college basketball here. All right, let's pick the winners real quick. Class six through one, boys and girls. I'm going Lansdowne boys. Who you got? Uh, Lansdowne boys. 
Class five. I'm going Verina still. Who you got? Uh, Verina. Come on, Maury. Class four. I'm going with. I'm going to go with Louisa. Like Taylor. Class three. I'm going Northside. Phoebus. Class two. You got East Rock, right? Yep. I've got Radford. Class one. We both got Surrey. Girls. Yep. Class six. I'm going Woodbridge. You say Cosby? Cosby. Class five. PA. Do we PA. ask? Class yeah. four, I'm sticking with Lake Taylor despite the injury. Lake Taylor. Class three, I'm going Spotswood. You're going William Monroe, right? William Monroe. Class two, Central Wise. Greensville. I thought you said Central Wise earlier. You change your mind? All right. In class yeah. one, I'm going Surrey Girls and a Nail Biter against Perry McClure. Surrey Girls. That's going to do it for High School Sports Talk. We thank Thomas Simmons, all the guests. We got Big Ten College Basketball coming your way next. On your home for hoops through March Madness. What is it, Ed? ESPN Radio 94.1.